Okay, so here at Superbooth 2018, uh, West Country Synthesis Indeed. with uh, Future Sound Systems. Yes. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, two new modules, yep. obviously the Gristleizer range, pin matrix, a lot of good stuff, sexy in black. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Ben. Yeah, um, we've Let's check out the new modules first. Yeah, so we've, we've announced the new Spectral Devastator, so it used to be the Phil 2 and we've upgraded it to the Phil 3, which we think is apt because it kind of sounds like filthy and that's what it does. And we've got the cyclical engine as well, which is uh, our first VCO, uh, OSC 1. Uh, and I'll show you this first. So it's kind of a basic VCO, but it's got a couple of bells and whistles that you might not expect. So you've got a VCA on each wave shape. So with a CV in? With a CV in, so we can take, yeah, let's take the triangle maybe from this one over here. Well, I love anything that encourages a bit of creative patching. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. So hopefully that's coming through. Maybe just give it a bit more juice. Adding motion at the start point exactly. of the patch rather than waiting for the filter downstream or folder or and it lets you do I mean you can take that up to audio rate. Oh I think so that's you can, so you can entirely separately AM modulate all the waves. Yeah, yeah, so you've got uh, sawtooth, triangle, sine and rectangular. Uh, each one is is separately AMable. Um, all of these individual outputs are pre-VCA and then your post-VCA output is here at the mix. So all those okay. VCAs are mixed in, in, into one output. Uh, you can then invert that as well, if you know you so wished. Uh, we've got shape modulation as well of the triangle, the sine, and the pulse. So I can... It's kind of the sound of the triangle. If we go over to the sine, I might just knock that down a bit. Of a skewing of the sine wave. Ish, it, it kind of tops out the the top and the bottom of the waveform, so you get close to with the triangular at least, close to that like half a sawtooth and then a flat edge that you find on the mini moog. Uh, okay, um, shark tooth ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, you get that on the sine wave as well, but it's a bit curvy, and then your pulse wave is just standard PWM. Yeah. Uh, and that's modulatable again. So if we take another modulation source. And you can really get that going quite nicely. Just take that modulation up to audio rate again. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, so you get really nice. Pair a couple of these two together and you can get some really, really nice kind of drones and stuff out of it. So we've also got um, a sync input, so you can do nice hard sync with this thing. We've got FM. Both in exponential and linear. Depth on that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. We well, want linear FM sometimes is very minimal depth. Yeah, no, this this is huge. We made sure that the linear FM really does cover. It pretty much goes from 20 hertz to 20k. You can All push right, it that wow. far. Um, the one volt per octave tracks about five octaves up. Uh, I think we pushed it to about six on one of these, and it was it was still pretty much bang on. So uh, we I are. I won't go on a massive rant, but those that insist on eight octaves of tracking, yeah, it's not, just ridiculous. We're not getting quite that. How many musical lines track more than five octaves? <laughs> That's it. I'm not. I could go that and polyrhythm, and I'm off yeah, on one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so we'll leave that there. Well, <laughs> so we got we got you know a nice stable track to it, which to be honest, we didn't really expect it to do that well. Uh, so that was a nice bonus for us. And then we've got this inject point, which we think is quite new. We don't we don't know that this exists anywhere else. What this does is it interrupts the sawtooth core of the oscillator. So you get all of these different intermodulations. Well, 
softer than the a FM. So it's kind of, yeah, it's like somewhere between FM and sync. So you can, you can feed it sources and it will just, it will just stop the oscillator. But if you're using a couple of these, we've kind of matched the levels so that you, you can get these really kind of interesting, chaotic uh, oscillator patches happening, you know, just doing a load of feedback stuff. Um, so we, we really want to kind of push this as well. The fact that this will do not just frequency, amplitude, and shape modulation, but also this intermodulation idea. Um, so that's pretty much the, the OSC one. Uh, oh, it'll also do low frequency modes as well. So uh, in HF mode, you go from 20 hertz to 20K. Okay. And then LF mode, we're going from, I think, up, well, up to 20 hertz down to it being stopped. So we've got a few things, a few kind of little quirks with this just to iron out before we release. We're hoping for a release in September. Um, one of those is just sorting out the ranges of the LF, LF, LF yeah. oscillation. But, but it will be fine. glacial right up through yeah. above yeah, human yeah, air. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, We've been really surprised at how well it actually works. So <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> it's a bonus, definitely a bonus. So that takes us on to the Phil 3 now. So this will be available in July, maybe a little bit sooner. We're, we're pretty much done on this. Um, but much like the original Phil 2, you've got a high pass and a low pass filter. They can be used completely independently or you can stack them together. So here at the moment, we're, we're running the uh, H uh, high pass filter, sorry, into the low pass filter. And um, with all the kind of like, Resonance and drive at fairly sensible levels, you get a relatively sensible, you know, high pass, yeah. low pass. But then what you can do is take the high pass into these super, like, screaming realms and do the same with the low pass as well. Ooh. You get all of these interesting subharmonic and harmonic locking features. So it really will tear up anything that you put into it. We've got color controls on each filter. So these were kind of implemented in trying to uh, get to voltage control over resonance. And they will do that to a degree, but they also introduce a kind of like tonal variation. So there's plenty of sweet spots in there depending yeah. on what you're feeding in. We've also got this blast switch, which what it tries to do is linearize the filter core, so make this more sensible. But whilst it does that, it actually gives the resonance more space to breathe. So you get kind of more obvious resonance. Like that. Yeah. yeah? So again, we can, we can do very interesting stuff modulating all of this. slightly more musically, if I come over to this side of the uh, case, we should have a bit of a patch going on, a bit more musical. So this is just taking, we've got some drums on the Electron uh, Digitax, running that through uh, the Gristalizer, so the TG5 preamp the TG3 filter and the TG4 modulator VCA. Uh, just to give a bit of crunch on the snare. And then the bass line is a couple of cyclical engines being mixed down on the MX-1 into the spec dev. And I think straight out, I don't know, maybe through the TG4 VCA again, just to work as a master VCA. Keep it crunchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. plenty of crunch for us. So, so roughly when, I've, you mentioned one of them, but roughly when's the filter ready? Roughly when's the oscillator ready? So filter should be early July 2018. Uh, we're hoping the OSC one should be September 2018. It may well be earlier. Uh, just after the kind of backlog with the Gristalizer, we're trying to give ourselves pretty lengthy. Yeah, that was a huge <laughs> success. 
So, uh, rough pricing as well? Uh, spec dev, we're hoping somewhere between 150 to 200 RRP, inclusive of that. We okay. don't want to stray too much above the original. And then the cyclical engine, uh, we're hoping for 250, inclusive of that, British pounds again. Okay, brilliant. So, yeah. Thank you very much. No worries, Ben, thank you.